We've talked a bit about taking charge of relationships and doctors you know about, but the rest of the people in your life, your so-called support system, are also important. Sometimes you find you're supporting the support system, and that really has to be turned around. To listen to wives, particularly, I must say, I mean, it's, I feel almost tragic to listen to woman after woman coming into the office telling me the conditions which she's living with. And very often I have women sitting on an examining table who don't have cancer. But what I do is look them in the eye and say, supposing today I told you you have cancer, would you go home and live under those conditions? And their answer is no, of course not. And what I'm saying is don't wait. That there are many of you watching this tape perhaps who don't have a cancer. Don't wait to have cancer change your life. Look at what's going on in your life. Those are the questions I bring up to people all the time. Why are you sick now? What's happening in your life? To get them to reflect back on all the relationships and changes that have occurred. When you are doing this, I must say, I am not telling you to be selfish. I don't like that word. Um, I used to say to people, look, it's okay to go home and say no without guilt. And then one woman came into my office and said, you know what sounds nicer? Why not just say yes to yourself? You don't have to say no to others. Say yes to yourself. And that's the issue I'm bringing up to you. I had a woman come into my office who had extensive breast cancer that had metastasized to a bone. And she needed her husband to help her get dressed. And she said to me, this is very undignified. My husband has to help me get dressed. I think I should die. Well, we changed that. She saw some things she could still give to life. Because remember, you're capable of loving even if you're paralyzed from the neck down. Because part of what I share with you is if you were quadriplegic and you said, I need to commit suicide, before I help you do that, you spend a month with a quadriplegic painter who holds a brush in his mouth. Your body is not your way of giving love. You're more than your body. This same woman came in a few months later, said, you know, my husband said, I've got to come in and work for him because his secretary quit. I hate what I have to do every day. I said, that's easy. Then go ahead and die. Use your cancer. Then you don't have to go to work every day. She changed all of that. She also learned, after a group meeting, which she came to, you know, the exceptional cancer patient groups that we meet with a friend of hers, they then went out to dinner, got home late. She said to her family, I'm tired. It's time for me to do my meditation. She went into the bedroom, meditated, came out, and guess what had happened? Dinner was on the table, and the table was set. She said, I had to have cancer to learn. My husband and sons could make dinner and set the table. And they have changed enormously. Behind the message I'm giving you is one of unconditional love. I mean, I truly believe we're only here for one reason. The universe was created for one reason, to give love. It has to be given with free will, or it's meaningless. And if you're here to give love, then I don't worry about saying to you, go home and say yes to yourself, because you're setting an example for everyone. You're not saying to them they can't say yes to themselves. And again, with love, you can say no if something more important comes up in a family relationship. Um, you can get angry at each other. It's okay, because love is there to heal the wounds, and we go on. When you don't express the anger, when you don't assert yourself, then resentment, hatred, and murder occur. Um, and I laugh because I remember the line, divorce, never murder, often. I mean, these are the things that come up. If you express the anger, then separation doesn't occur. People stay together because the love will heal the wounds. A woman came into my office who had extensive breast cancer, and she said, you know, I want to heal myself. I want you to document it. I'm going to heal myself. I said, I think it's very hard to become a saint because that really may be what it takes, but start by saying no without guilt. A few weeks later, she came back to the office, tumor smaller, saying, you know what? I walked out of the house with the phone ringing today. First time she ever said no to anything in her life. A few more weeks, a smaller cancer and a smile on her face. What happened? Oh, when my alcoholic husband acted up, I called the police. And he said, you're embarrassing me in front of the neighbors? And I said, I don't accept your behavior anymore. But she ultimately had surgery. Because she, she said, it is hard to become a saint and heal yourself. I said, I know that. I warned you about that originally. And so again, she could use me as a doctor. But I must also tell you that after her operation, which was a mastectomy, the nurse said to her, tell me about Dr. Siegel. And she said, why? She said, did he hypnotize you? I said, what do you mean? She said, you have no pain and you're walking around cheering up other patients. She said, well, I chose him to do this and I wanted it done. It's my way of being healed. Why should I have pain and why should I be upset and angry and depressed? And that's what I'm talking about, you see. 
I'm part of a support system. One of our patients said, it's your four faiths, faith in yourself, your doctor, your treatment, your spiritual faith. And I'd add faith in your family too, in a sense. Don't leave anything out. You have to keep all your options open. But if you don't assert yourself, if you remember back to that lady who said, I'll make this marriage work if it kills me, it could have. She has options, she can walk out, she can go home and say no, she can change a lot of things. And women particularly, I have to talk to you because you have a lot of gentle power. I know a couple, one of them, they're in the real estate business. And the wife literally makes deals worth millions of dollars. Of course, her husband loves her for it. But then they get home and he doesn't like what she made for dinner. And when they go out to eat, he hates what she wears and how her hair's done and he sends her back in the house to redress and to redo herself. And I said, did it ever occur to you, you can go back in the house and say, I'm not coming out again? Go eat dinner by yourself? Or I said, even better, next time he comes home, because he's always yelling at her and telling her how terrible she is, she never makes the right decisions. I said, next time he comes home for dinner, when he walks in and says, where's dinner? Say, there isn't any. You know me, I can't decide anything, so I didn't know what to make for dinner. Why aren't my clothes done? I have trouble making decisions, so I never bought any soap powder. That's why your clothes aren't done. If we start treating each other differently, which means if we change, if you change, the people living with you have to change. Once one individual in a family changes, the entire family's different. Now, I've seen things happen, too. I've seen a woman say to her husband, you can't abuse me anymore, and he promptly have a heart attack. And sadly, she said, okay, it was easier the old way. I'll go home, be abused, and die. And she really did that. She said, you can visit me, but no funny business, meaning don't try to cheer me up or make me want to live. And it was sad, but we continued to love her, because that's really all I'm here for, is to love you. And we're here to love each other. And the choices are yours. It's your life. It takes a lot of courage to take responsibility for your life. I know it's easier to go to the doctor and say, take care of me, be my father, my mother, and take care of me. But being yourself, living your life, will do something beautiful.